In this episode of GraphQL Hacking, we are going to look at command injection. I'm pretty sure most of you are already familiar with this vulnerability, but let's have a little introduction and how we can exploit it in a GraphQL application. So as the name suggests, this vulnerability allows attackers to execute commands remotely on the server. So to exploit it, we have to find a parameter that takes user input to perform some action. But we have to find this parameter in a GraphQL query in this case. And then we will try to inject some OS commands in those variables. So yeah, that was a quick introduction. Let's move on to the practical part. And for demonstration, as always, we are going to use DVGA. So first we're going to exploit command injection in beginner mode and then in an export mode. So first we're going to look at the beginner mode. DVGA application has this functionality called import paste through which a user can import paste from an external URL. Okay, before submitting a URL, let's capture the request in Burp and analyze the GraphQL query. So we have captured the request and we can see this is a mutation operation as it is adding something to the paste. So the name of this object is import paste and it is expecting four variables host, port, path, and scheme. Okay, let's send this request to repeater. First, we will send the request without making any changes and see the response. And it says 200 okay means everything is normal, but let's try to inject something in the path variable. So I'm gonna type in a semicolon. Semicolon is used to run two or more commands in the same line. And then the command would be who am I? In the response, we can see it says DVGA means this is actually executing our command and it is not filtering anything. Let's try to use some other command, uname hyphen A. And in the response, we can see it says Linux. So this is working perfectly fine and, and there is no filtering at all because this is a beginner mode. Let's try to inject the same OS command in a different variable. Let's say port. But this time we are getting this error message. Could not convert string to float. Well, that's obvious because this port variable was expecting an integer. So whenever you're trying to inject some commands, you have to find a variable that is expecting string, not an integer or Boolean value. Now let's try injecting commands in export mode. Again, I'm going to capture this request and I'm going to change the name of this tab to export mode so I don't get confused. And again, we are typing in the same command semicolon and who am I, but in the response, we cannot see anything. It's now actually filtering the semicolon, which is pretty good, but we can try some other commands too, like ampersand. Ampersand is kind of similar to semicolon. It executes the first command asynchronously and then execute the second command without waiting for the first to end. So it just executes the command immediately, just like the semicolon. But again, in the response, we can see nothing. That means ampersand is also being filtered. Let's try something else. We can still use the pipe command though. Pipe lets you combine two or more commands. So I'm going to type pipe and then who am I? And in the response, we can see DVGS. So finally it's working. It was not filtering the pipe command. That is pretty lame. Is this actually the export mode? Let's try another command, uname hyphen A, and we are getting the response perfectly. So this is how you can inject commands in a GraphQL variable. Just the same process, find a parameter, and then try to inject in it to check for it. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed watching it, don't forget to like.